Okay, we have Duke up on the podium. Duke advancing to the Sweet 16. We have head coach John Shire. We have freshman guard Jared McCain. We have sophomore forward Kyle Filipowski. We'll start with an opening statement from coach, then we'll go to questions for the student athletes. Dismiss them in about five minutes and take questions for coach. But Coach Shire, if you want to start. Yeah, just really proud of these guys and proud of our team. Um, James Madison, you know, you're playing a team that has three losses the whole year. And they had a really impressive performance against Wisconsin. And I don't know if we expected this, but I just thought our guys came out with such a great competitiveness. And they were obviously ready to play, ready, not just ready to play, you have to be ready to compete in these games. And everybody that was on the floor, I felt had that. Uh, it helps, you know, when you have a guy like Jared McCain, you know, he broke the Duke record today for threes in the NCAA tournament. We've had some pretty good shooters here. And uh, so, to, so to break that record with eight, uh, I'm sure he's mad at me for taking him out early. He's want me to get the record. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's going to be mad at me. He wanted to be in there more. But he had uh, just he had a great way about him, obviously. And Flip, just the attention that he gets in his passing. I thought it was one of the best passing games we've had. You know, 22 assists and six turnovers. They're top 20 in the country with turning you over. And uh, obviously, we're going to enjoy this one, celebrate it today, and find out quickly who we're playing. And can't, can't wait to go to Dallas. We're going to start on this side of the room. Questions for the student athletes. We'll start in the back row, and then we'll go up one row. Yep. All right, we'll go over row four on the aisle. Hey, Jared, Adam Zagoria, NJ.com. At, at what point did you know you were just feeling it today? And uh, were you upset that he didn't let you <laughs> try to break the record of nine? Oh, I feel like every game I'm, I'm always ready to see if I'm going to go off. Um, I, I work so hard, so I'm just prepared every game. Um, I do blame him a little bit for sure. He definitely um, just wants to keep that record. Um, yeah, I wanted to beat him, so. It's not mine. He's talking about the points record. You know, that's what he's I, talking about. I just about. want to be him, really. That's, yeah. all, that's really all my goal is in life is to be him. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's really it. <laughs> we'll stay on that same side in the back row. Jared, when you hit that 6-3, was that the uh, MJ shrug you did? I don't know what I did out there, to be honest with you. I, I think so. I'm pretty sure that's what I hit. Um, yeah, I don't know what I was doing. I, really, I wasn't really conscious out there, though. So. What, what was it like to, you know, the, a first half there, you hit your first six threes NCAA tournament game? And, I mean, can you just describe what it felt like? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the best feeling in the world when you know the work you put in is um, showing up on the court, especially in such a big game like this, to go to the Sweet 16. Uh, for these types of games, you just want to win, and I want to do everything I can to win. And tonight, if that was making shots, making threes, and then that's what it was. So I'm just grateful to even have this opportunity to go to the Sweet 16. We're going to stay on that side in row one, then we'll come over to this side. Go ahead. We're one. Uh, Jackson Hefner from the Prees, JMU student newspaper. Um, I'll keep it short. After last year, how much do you guys want to make the Sweet 16? Start with Kyle, then go Jared. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously Jared wasn't here last year to be uh, to experience what, what we went through but um, you know none of us forgot about what happened with Tennessee in the second round and I think that just added a little bit more fire um, to us to the returning guys and and, and we knew it was going to be a similar type of game so we, we uh, I think we learned our lesson playing last year we didn't want to repeat that at all we, you know um, just learned and moved on from that and, and I think that showed tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, I was watching that game last year, so we've been talking about all year how um, in the tournament just like, people get more physical, they try to punk you, and um, we weren't going to let that happen. We weren't going to lose off that. So I obviously want to win for all these guys, especially what happened last year, so we just got to keep going. We're going to go on this side. We're going to start on the end. Row three, go ahead, and then we'll move into the second. Tom Marion with AP Radio. Kyle, can you talk about the start of the game, the first few minutes where you took control, what went into that? Yeah, I mean, just – just staying poised, um, you know, knowing knowing that it's a it's a long game of runs, and um, you know, just staying staying with my guys. Uh, you know, I think just sticking to that game plan, having that trust and faith in, in one another, um, you know, that really just gets the the momentum flowing in our favor, and uh, you know, it was just a great feeling tonight. Stay on row three. This is Jordan Ron from ESPN. This question is for Jared. I feel like the other night there was a couple balls that were halfway down and they kind of popped out. You were kind of just like smirking. How much did you think that this kind of game was coming, knowing that you were that close kind of the other, the other night to 
for this happening as well. Yeah, I was, I was talking with my family, like, when those shots go in and out, I know um, I'm just due. I'm due for, to, to make some more the other night, um, and tonight was that night. Uh, but yeah, when I see a few go in and out, I just kind of smirk at the rim, because I know the rim just wants to give me back some, some makes. Uh, so yeah, and that happened tonight. Or just don't hit the rim. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coach. All right. Uh, we're on the same side. We're on the aisle, row three. Hey, guys. Jerry Beach from Field Level Media. Uh, James Madison got off to a really fast start there tonight. They were really confident coming in. Uh, how essential was it for you guys to have that kind of first few minutes so that they didn't get a chance to build on Friday night's momentum? Yeah, I mean, just uh, just just watching the game against Wisconsin with them, you know, they, they, they had 14 of their first, you know, 17 points in, off of turnovers and in transition. So just um, not letting them get in the flow uh, early on in the game. Um, just, you know, we, we won that game, you know, a lot with our defense. And I, I know we had guys that were on fire tonight too, but, um, you know, that just came that just came with our defense. So it was great. We'll, uh, we'll do last two for the student athletes, starting on this side in the back row. Uh, just a, a quick one for Jared. So when you hit your first three, you, I don't know if you were smirking at the rim or the JMU student or family section. Was that smile towards the section? Yeah, it was mostly towards that, the, okay. the section. And if I can just follow up with one more, it's um, when you hit shots early like that, and maybe Kyle, you can address this, does it – take away some of their physicality? Does it make you easy? Does it ease up some of their physicality or make you more comfortable with it? Yeah, I mean, as a shooter, when you hit, hit some early, they obviously want to press up on you. Um, so it definitely makes the game wide open uh, for drives, for kicks. Uh, but yeah, so to see if you go in early, I knew they were going to press up on me, so I knew I had to get by them and make some kicks. Kyle, anything to add? No, I mean, Jared, Jared said most of it. And, um, you know, I think, I think just with, just with um, you know my passes in the beginning of the game, you know the first one to Jared that uh, that really got him to start with with those eight threes. Um, so yeah. All credits to Flip. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Last question for student athletes down here in row one. Hey Jared, Ryan Moore here with Fox News. When you're that hot, is it hard to kind of contain yourself and just not shoot from wherever you want? <laughs> uh, definitely. Um, I definitely have to listen to coach here sometimes. Uh, but when you get that high, you want to just you know, pull it from half, do whatever you can. Uh, but I know in these types of games, obviously, it's a game of runs. They can obviously come back, so you just got to make the smart play. But you definitely want to shoot it from anywhere. Jared, Kyle, congratulations. <laughs> we'll see you at the Sweet 16. Thank you. Yes, Duke locker room is still open, so you can get these guys at the locker room. We'll take questions for Coach Shire at this time. We'll start here in row two on this side of the room. Coach, I saw Roach, you know, get his hand and look like he was writhing in pain. Blake's obviously went down really hard. It went completely silent. Any update on both of them and the health of your team going into the Sweet 16? No, uh, not yet. We have to get an x-ray for Jeremy. Uh, I mean, clearly it looked like he dislocated his pinky there. Uh, and then Jalen, you know, it's a scary play. I, I don't think there was any bad intention at all. Just uh, it's a scary play. So obviously we got to get him examined and checked out, but uh, I don't know his status yet. We'll stay on that same side in row four on the aisle. Hey, John, this is a little bit of a deeper question, but there's been a lot of talk about freshmen struggling in the tournament. Kentucky went out early. Seth Greenberg saying only older teams, you know, advance. How do you kind of balance – freshmen, what's the right balance for freshmen with older guys? Obviously, you have some really talented freshmen this year, and you're going to have a whole bunch next year. You know, how do you kind of get the right balance with the older guys and the freshmen? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's an art form. You know, I don't think it's an exact science, right? And when you recruit, especially in today's day and age, there's so much uncertainty, especially for us at least, when you have uh, – multiple players that have a chance to hopefully go pro at some point. So, you know, everybody has their own journey. But, you know, look, for me, it's – should I have not recruited Jared McCain because he'd be a freshman? You know, I just <laughs> – end of the day, you, you, you go after the guys you believe in. And, you know, look, we've been a part of – since I've been on staff with Coach K these last two years uh, that I've been head coach, you know, we've had – we've won a national championship with a freshman heavy group. Uh, we've gone to two Elite Eights where you're right there. Uh, this group, it certainly helps to have a Jimmy Roach. You know, the 15 team at Quinn Cook. Like, th there has to be some balance, of course. Uh, but you can't sit back and say, 
this is exactly what you need because when you have a chance to bring in the freshmen that we did this year or the freshmen for next year, uh, we're going to do that every day of the week. I think anybody would if they could or they tried to, uh, but you still need experience in returning players. So for me, it's you try to find that balance, but uh, that's the nature of being in college basketball in 2024. Well, Stan. Yeah, there's no question you feel it, right? I mean, the average age, I mean, has certainly gone up. Next year will be the same way. I think a year from now it will go down a little bit where uh, things can maybe even out just from an age perspective. Uh, but you feel it now more. You, you, you definitely do versus a few years ago or – um, hopefully in two or three years from now as well. But uh, absolutely, you do feel it. Stay on that same side, also in row four, a little further in. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Adam Weinrich with Minute Media. Between Houston and Texas A&M, is there a matchup that you prefer and no. is there a matchup that you sense that your team prefers? You get what you get. <laughs> you, you get what you get. We'll, we'll be ready, whoever it is. Two really good teams. I, I can't tell you. Yeah. We'll come to this side of the room, row four. Nicole? Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic. John, you've mentioned uh, a couple days ago when you're at Duke and you lose two games, it can feel like the world is ending. How did you guys get from that a week ago to the performances here in Brooklyn? You know, our guys talk about all the time, they talk about having humility. And, uh, you know, this game can humble you. I don't care if you're a coach, if you're a player. And, uh, you know, our last regular season game, the ACC tournament game, uh, you, had to, you have to have great humility to understand what you have to do better. And clearly all of us had to do something better. And, um, you know, there's no replicating the work you need to put in. And the, the, the silver lining in that was it gave us a week to work on ourselves, to look in the mirror, uh, to not listen to what people may think or we're done. Or that. I don't know what was said because I, I truly don't pay attention. Uh, and I'm proud of our team for just sticking to the work. And... Uh, and one thing that our guys always say, to, humility, but also uh, just having gratitude. Like you, you have to be grateful for the bad moments that come your way, too. And if you handle them the right way, it can put you in a position where you're even more ready. And I thought that that's what it did in the Vermont game and then uh, tonight against James Madison. We'll do one final question for Coach on the other side of the aisle, row five. Roger Rubin from Newsday. Uh, it's a little bit like Nicole's question. You have this extra time after, I mean, the backdrop is obviously losing the conference tournament game, but you have this extra time. What did you do with the extra time that got your team looking like this <coughs> coming in? Well, I think it started with a lot of uh, individual conversations, uh, honest team conversations, because, you know, obviously there's the work you need to put in on the court. That work doesn't matter if you don't know where your players' heads are at, what they're feeling, what they see, what they're getting. And so there's a lot of talks started there. And then for us, you know, our defense was actually pretty good, but our offense hurt our defense, you know, that, in both games that we lost. And so, <coughs> excuse me. And so for us, we just spend more time working on what's the next, we just kept saying, what's the next action? Team takes away the first thing, what are we going to next? And, uh, <coughs> You know, you're not going to score 93 points every game. But I do think our offense was a lot better in these two games. And then just getting back to how you need each other. You know, you just you need each other in this. I thought we had great connectivity and uh, great practice habits. I know that's the last question, but shout out to our women's team. You know, we're, we're, we're both in the Sweet 16. Uh, I'm watching the game getting ready today. And, you know, Reagan Richardson. Uh, oh my God, she was <laughs> she was incredible today. So seeing our team go to Sweet 16 to share this with them, hopefully we can uh, both keep advancing. But I uh, just want to give them a shout out, and uh, we'll see the ladies back in Durham. All right, thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. We'll see you in the Sweet 16. Thank you.